So today it's restringing an electric guitar day. I don't do this all that often. Some people change their strings sort of every couple of gigs. I change mine when they just start feeling a bit horrible and just a bit dull in tone. So at the moment I've got my amp set up here. They're just sounding a bit not very nice. So my first job then is to remove the strings and to clean the neck up. So this video, hopefully, I'm gonna do this in about half an hour, but look down in the description and you will see um, the timestamps for various parts of the video. So I'm just gonna take the lead out. There we go, let me put that back in in a minute. So the first job then is just to take off the, just to unwind these um, tuning heads. Now this, is a Strat Plus Deluxe. So it has a few things on it, like these, these um, tuning heads. And I don't know if you can see on the, the other camera here. We've got these sort of heads that you can tighten the string on to the, the, the um, actual fitting as well. Um, so it's just some refinements made in the 90s just to try and make things even better, really, just to refine the product. But, you know, it's pr there's still the 1954 design is pretty good. So I'm just going to take unwind these strings. Now, you can use one of these, uh, which is a string winder. Uh, so I'm just going to take these off, just unwind them sufficiently just to get the tension, just to release release the tension there. Okay, there we go. So now they're slack enough. Now some people just take the string off the, just off the, the fitting there. But actually, you're better off just getting a pair of cutters and cutting just on the the um, just above the bridge, like that, and then just removing the straight parts of the strings. Now this has got something called a Wilkinson nut on it. Now if I just hold this up to the other camera here, it's this sort of metal fitting that's got a series of rollers in it. So that basically allows the guitar to, the strings rather, to have a free passage between the main fretboard and the the, uh, the headstock and the idea with that is to simply stop any sort of changes in tension which would in turn affect the tuning of the guitar. So I'm just going to undo all of these now, just undo all of those and get the, uh, the strings out. There we go. Now at this juncture it's important not to leave the guitar unstrung for too long. Um, the reason being that you just, um, you know, the, the neck will change and it'll just take a little bit, uh, the neck will change shape slightly and you will leave the, the guitar sort of untensioned. Now, I'm also going to take off this plate here. Now, this is, this hides the tremolo and it also allows you to get the strings out. Now, I'm going to show you this. Um, this some of Stratocasters have six holes here. This has got a larger hole, which would basically means that you don't need to take the, the scratch plate, uh, the, the back plate off. Now, the trouble with um, that you sometimes get is that the strings, because they are held in, you get a problem with the, the ball ends not coming back through the, the tremolo. But this is a slightly nicer tremolo system, this. Um, in the fact that it's also got something called a trem setter. Uh, what a trem setter is, is something that it replaces one of the springs of your tremolo system. And you can retrofit these to any, any Fender Strat. This one has got one installed where you can see the, the, the spring here that's, that's basically damping any sort of slight vibrations within the guitar. <laughs> Uh, and it's meant to stop sort of um, meant to stop tiny pitch variations and little flutterings that you may get with your tremolo system. So here are my old strings. Now, when I was a penniless student, I used to keep them. Um, I used to take them off, uh, take the rest off, and keep them in a packet somewhere. I might need them one day. I never did, but I thought, well, I can't really keep buying strings because uh, I'm a student and broke. So that was that. Now. 
The next thing to do, if you look on the, the neck here, I don't know if you can see that on this camera here, there are sort of these shapes and dirt all over the neck. And that's just where my fingers have been for the last, goodness knows how many months these strings have been on. So, first step, methylated spirits. Now, kids, don't set fire to this stuff because you lose your eyebrows. And also, don't use it in a confined space for too long. I am in a slightly confined space here, but I'll just not breathe for the next 10 minutes. Now, what you need to do is you need to rub this in, rub this to get all the, the finger grease off. You can see it coming off there. Lovely. Look at that. Yeah, yummy. So. Now, you could just change the strings and not bother with this, but that would be a shame because you've, you really want this thing to be as clean as you can possibly get. Which is so much nicer to play when you haven't got finger grease and things to slow you down. Now things like fast fret, they're sort of designed to, to try and sort of minimise the sort of, uh, you know, grease and prolong the life of strings and all that. I mean, I must confess I've never used it. Um, but it's it's something that you can use. You can, you know, every time you put the guitar in its case, if you sort of wipe the strings down, you really can prolong the life, uh, their life. So there we go. That is looking slightly better. It's still a little bit manky. Now, also a brief look at these frets here. If I if I sort of turn this in the light, you can probably see that the frets are quite worn on this. Now I've had this guitar. I bought it when it was couple of years old it's a 93 Strat so what's that makes it 25 years old uh, I've had it for 23 of those years when I bought it it was virtually unplayed somebody just brought it into the shop and said oh, I don't really want this guitar anymore uh, luckily I was in the right place at the right time so I almost uh, the music shop didn't make a huge amount of money on this I don't think still never mind Thanks to them, I have a very nice guitar that I've played for years and years and years and shall continue to play. Um, it's always important when you go into a music store, if you want to you know, try out an electric guitar, it's essential to have the, you know, to be able to, um, to try something out um, and try it out for a while. Just play, play lots of things on it. Because um, if you don't have something that's nice, you get it home, you think, oh, I don't really get on with this. You know, you, you could have thrown quite a lot of money away. And that's a shame. You know, when you buy an instrument, it's for life, really. You know, if you buy the right one. So, next up, some boiled linseed oil. Now, what this does is it replaces, it sort of keeps the wood nice and supple. So what I'll do is I'll just wipe it into here, like that. Just give it a real good dose of oil. Now I've always done this. So this guitar, I've been changing the strings on it for 23 years now, and I've always done this. So anyone who's horrified at the, the prospect of linseed oil all over the guitar neck, well, I can say from experience that it works. Um, because you just keep the wood nice and, you know, nice and sort of fed. Now, once you've rubbed it in, once you rub the wood in, just go over it with a little cloth afterwards just to take off any of the excess. There we go. So now, and then obviously you don't want it all over your frets as well, so just wipe the frets down as well. Refretting is not a job that you can do by looking at YouTube you need to take it to somebody who really knows what they're doing. Because a rosewood neck is unvarnished, if you remove the frets, if you tap them out a bit too hard, you can end up splitting the wood. Ooh, nasty. And a maple neck, you'd obviously have to have, uh, you'd need to remove the varnish from the outside of the neck, uh, the outside of the fretboard, rather the edge of the neck, in order to reach the, um, to reach the frets to get them out. So at the same time, it's going to wipe beneath the pit guard and everything just to, you know, not, not particularly um, worried about my guitars. You can see from the back of it, it's, you know, it's had its use over the years. I'm not too precious about it. So 
The next thing to do is to put the new strings on. Now, I've just realized I've left my pack of strings in the van where I usually have them as a spare set. So bear with So now I've got the strings. I use these uh, Ernie Ball 11 gauge strings, but the gauge is obviously up to you. These ones are a bit heavier than the sort of standard gauges that you find the nines and the tens on the um, on some electric guitars. Presumably if you buy them in a shop as well, usually you have thinner strings on. So my first job then, now I've cleaned the guitar neck, is to thread this through the back of the tremolo here. And you can see if we look at the camera here, there's a hole there that the string just goes through. And you might have to just wiggle it through to make sure it, it goes all the way through. There we go. Now, if you're restringing a guitar that's got a raked back headstock, such as Gibson or any other guitar like that, you will need to have a little holder here so that you don't put any unnecessary strain on the on the um, the neck itself. So, all you need to do here is to basically cut. See where the string passes the the uh, the peg there. Just cut about an inch, maybe even a slightly less. There we go. You don't need a huge amount of string on the um, on the peg itself, because if you do, um, you'll end up with lots of winds of the string, and actually you're asking for tuning problems. Now, this Wilkinson here, uh, this old Wilkinson, will accept gauge 11 strings, but not 12. But most people don't use 12s anyway. You know, it's 9s, 10s, or 11s. Now, this one has got these tuning heads as I described at the beginning have have um, a little um, screw thread on the back which clamps these strings in now it's designed essentially to just hold the string but I basically I still put a, a twist I still put a wind around the, the peg here just to for extra safety now at the same time you can maintain the tension of the string And then just tug the strings lightly like this. There we go. That's the first string. So really the process of putting these other strings on is pretty much just exactly the same. So the second string in, just thread that through there. There we go. Now if you change the gauge of the string on the guitar, so I've got 11s on here, and there were 11s on there before, that's absolutely fine. If you do change the gauge of the string, sometimes you have to make adjustments to either the neck or the action or anything else or the intonation. The intonation will need looking at every time you change your strings, just to check that everything is going to work okay. So I'm just going to thread that through there, get my string winder. Just put that through there like so. Just undo that sufficiently to allow the string to go through. There we go. And wind that on. Make sure that each wind of the string goes underneath the previous one because you want the strings, essentially when they get to the, the end here, you want them to sort of head downwards to the, the, um, the tuning head itself. If you maintain the tension going up when, you, when you're when um, you winding the string on, there's no reason why the tuning should actually go out at all, even on a new set of strings. It shouldn't really make much odds. If you um, just wind them on without really sort of maintaining the tension all the way through, you can end up with tuning problems. Now, also, when you're putting the strings through the hole here, Make sure that the ball end goes all the way into the tremolo. I've seen a guitar once where the ball end is literally hanging on by a thread on the side of the tremolo system. And it's a wonder that the thing sort of stays put, really. Anyway, here's the D string. Now, the D string is actually under the most tension of all the strings on your guitar. Um, so when you put it on, be a little bit careful with the sort of stretching of the string. Um, I did another guitar uh, yesterday, in fact, it was I was um, changing the strings on somebody's guitar and the 
they said, oh, this guitar isn't playing very well. Um, it's not, it's the action's really high. And I played the D string and it was actually wound up to a B. So a whole major sixth above that D. And that was just, that I'd never ever seen a D string tuned that high before. Needless to say, it was still there, it hadn't snapped. But it was, it was kind of, you know, it wasn't far off. So I'm just gonna just make sure the winding of this is correct. There we go. I had, I had them the, each winding going above then. And there's my D. Now I you could hook a tuner up to this while you're doing it so that you get the correct note. I've got perfect pitch, so I don't need one, don't need a tuner, but if you have a, a tuner hooked up in your hooked up to the guitar while you're changing the strings, that's a good idea, just to make sure that you're getting the right note and you're maintaining the, the tension of the string. So here's the next one, here's the G. Make sure that's gone in. Yep, yeah, that's gone in. Okay. So with the wound strings, I cut about an inch, but for the plain strings, I cut just a little bit more because of the absence of the windings on plain strings. So that's the G, the B and the E. Um, you may have a little bit of time getting the thing to grip round the tuning head. But um, most of the time it's absolutely, you know, it's fine. So just put thread that through there. There we go. And so some of the tuning heads have got a, a like a hole in the middle that goes downwards as well, where you can put the string in before it winds round. You know, you get that, you find that in quite a few older guitars. Um, and some of the, oh yeah, I think my Telecaster's got that as well. So um, really, it's just a, it's just common sense of getting that string to grip. So, oh, there you go, there's a G. Okay. Now the idea of the trem setter as well in here, it um, eliminates sort of sort of wobbling about of the tremolo. But also, if you pop a string on a, a, a Stratocaster that doesn't have a trem setter, the tremolo tension will change suddenly, putting all the other strings out of tune. So it's kind of it fulfills that sort of function as well. Um, although I haven't snapped a string this century, I always take the strings off before I think they're. One's gonna, one's gonna go, and I'm not particularly hard on strings um, as a player, so um, I haven't snapped one. Um, yeah, it's just since 1990 something. So let's just thread the B through here. Now the Wilkinson, it will allow an 11 um, through um, on the top, but anything more it won't. You can get Wilkinsons, new ones, which retrofit onto these old ones. They're thinner than this now. Um, and you can get new ones which allow you to um, uh, to connect, uh, to, to string it up with fatter strings, if you so wish. But, you know, on a, unless you're Stevie Ray Vaughan, who's, you know, famously played very heavy strings, you know, um, this old Wilkinson is sufficient. And apparently the only one that hasn't gone wrong. There's, uh, apparently these were not particularly reliable back in the day, but... Mine's been on there for 25 years, and it's fine. So that's where it's going to stay. So, let's wind this up to a B. There's your B. A bit more. Okay, and then lastly, we've got the E string. Now, in a minute, I'm going to just briefly test the intonation of this guitar as well, and also show you about setting the action. Um, because that's something you just have to check every time you do your strings is to make sure that you've got uh, You've got to make sure that you've got your um, that Everything's in tune and the action is sufficient for your needs So there we go. There's my final E string my first string Just run that through there Sometimes it's just if you the only trouble with the Wilkinson's here is that you can occasionally get the can become stuck as while you're trying to put the thing through. Now, in this case, 
you may need to have a pair of pliers that just grip the string just to push it through because the very end of the string where I cut it off will have a little bit of a profile on it. There we go. There we go. Okay, that's running freely through there now. So let's put that on through there. So this one at the top, I, I this one broke. The, this winder, the the um, the actual um, tuning head, so it's not particularly reliable, but it's fine. It just stays, uh, you know, it stays uh, in tune, absolutely fine. Um, tuning heads, they're dead easy. If you've got a guitar, it's not staying in tune very well because of the tuning heads. A set of really decent heads is only about fifty pounds. So if you've got a guitar that's otherwise really nice then that would be fine so don't worry about buzzing at this stage the guitar is designed not to be played horizontally so it'll sound better when you so that is sounding rather better sounding rather better than it did before. So, there's my guitar set up. So, the tremolo here, as you can see, this little bit here should be sat just above the, the guitar. You can see, if there's possible on the camera here, whoops, you can see that there's a tiny little gap under here so that the thing is actually pulled up ever so slightly. Don't forget, this is a tug of war match between the springs underneath and the strings. And you've got two opposing teams that must be of equal ability so that that little flag stays in the middle. So every time I pull the tremolo, it will return to the, exactly the same spot. Now, American stuff like this will have imperial fittings on your uh, for the action. So you need a 1.27 millimeter. That's one twentieth of an inch um, in order to make those adjustments. But most um, other stuff, Japanese stuff, Far Eastern stuff, uh, uses metric uh, fittings. So you know that's absolutely fine. Um, let's make sure I put the top on this. Uh, these meths and the uh, um, and the linseed oil. Both of these go bang very easily if you set light to them. So don't do that. Okay. So now I've now got to check my intonation. Now what you do is you play a harmonic at twelfth fret, and then compare it with the fretted note at 12th fret. So here's the harmonic. They're not too far off, but there is a slight difference there. So that's not too bad. That's not bad at all. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to have a look at the action here. Now, when you are, if you can see on this camera here, you can see if you fret first fret and 13th like this, if you press down at seven, there should be a tiny little bit of give there roughly equal to the sort of gauge of maybe your E or your top E or your B string. As long as there's some sort of curvature of the neck, you're in business. So, and there's no buzzing. That's not too bad. It will change when you wear the guitar. It's much better. Than, uh, than putting it on the table, because also the neck is very slightly different uh, in, in terms of angle. Mm -hmm. 
if you need to adjust the action of any of the um, any of these pieces, be aware that the neck has got a curvature on it. It's got a, what's known as a radius. So you'd need to make sure that the height of your um, strings here, the height of your saddle pieces, roughly match the curve of your neck. But it all depends on whether there's that sort of buzzing or not. That, for my money, is okay because this had roughly the same set of strings on it before. But the um, there's a slight buzz on the A string there. The answer is if it feels okay, then it is. Then it will be absolutely fine. So, electrics wise, that's kind of the scope of a different. Uh, different film, but there we go. There is a, a complete restring of your guitar so that you've maintained the tension of the strings while putting them on. You've got the tremolo here sat slightly above the, the, the block of wood, and you've got the setting here. Now, if you if you increase the height of one of these saddle pieces, the tuning will change because you're putting essentially you're making the string more tense. There we go. If you're having, if these are all right at the bottom or right at the top, the answer is there's going to be a problem somewhere with the neck um, being too much of a curve. Now this has got something called a dual action truss rod in that there's an adjustment here and there's an adjustment there. Now, any adjustments that you make to the truss rod should be done, ideally, overnight. Because you're going to need to have a way of making the... Um, you're going to need to essentially sort of uh, pander to the fact that wood is a living material. And it will always have a sort of... Um, there'll always be a, a problem with trying to make adjustments too quickly with wood. So if you do make a, a big adjustment to your truss rod, make sure that you leave a good length of time, good amount of time, before trying any other adjustments. And also, if you're having to turn anything more than, you know, a quarter of a turn or an eighth or a quarter of a turn, that really is quite a lot. And if it's very easy to turn and you're turning it round and round and round, then I'm afraid to say you might have broken it. Um, now, all is not lost. If you've trashed the neck or something needs a refret and you can't refret it, you can get another neck. But then again, it's a different instrument. It's something that's maybe not the thing that you first bought. You know, these things have a finite lifespan. So, anyway, there is uh, the restringing of an electric guitar. Hopefully this one will provide me with years more service. And there we go.